Now we're going to look at uh, furnace blower motors, uh, their diagnosis and their replacement if necessary. Uh, in this case we're looking at an electrical furnace and uh, no matter the type of the furnace, first thing you want to do is shut the power off to the unit at the fuse box, disconnect switch, or breaker box. Then you want to remove the, in this case, remove the access panel and we want to gain access to the electrical components. And as always, you want to check with the meter just to make sure that the power to the unit is off. And in this case, the power is off. If uh, you think that you're having a problem with your with the blower motor on your furnace, the first thing you want to do is check the run capacitor, make sure it's good. Uh, simple way to tell to is once you have access to the motor, if it won't run. You stick your hand on the motor and feel it. Feel if it is really warm. If it's really warm, then it's a sign that there could be a problem. And it tells you that it does have power. Uh, to remove the the uh, blower motor, you need to start by removing or disconnecting the wires. Uh, normally there will be uh, at least two and sometimes three speeds to the cooling. They'll be different colors. Uh, and then there'll be a common wire. And it's a simple matter of uh, disconnecting the wires. Well now most of your modern furnaces and gas, uh, especially gas furnaces, they will have a control board that the, uh, the blower motor wires will be connected to. But in this case, they have a simple uh, blower motor uh, fan relay. Once you have them dis the wires disconnected, you can fish them through. And uh, once you do that, then you'll have the have them ready to to remove. After you've got the wires uh, loose, then normally it's a simple matter to uh, get the blower assembly out. Usually, there's two mounting screws. Usually they're located up in side, but in this case they're in the front here. Usually a couple 5 16 screws, and they're usually simple to remove. Once you have them removed, then it's a simple matter of sliding most blower assemblies out of the furnace. Now that you have it out, you can do some simple electrical checks on your blower motor to see if it's good. Uh, normally you can go, you'll have a white wire, and you can take a simple resistance reading between the leads. You can go between the white and and each of the, the wires that are, you are using. You'll be using one for cooling speed and one for heating speed, usually. Why don't you take a resistance reading? And it varies a little bit with the motor, but it's going to be typically 20 to 40 ohms, depending on the speed. But uh, and the higher speed uh, wires will typically have a lower resistance. But uh, if uh, If your resistance readings are good between the between the neutral and the speed wire, then you want to check uh, the motor itself, make sure it's not grounded. You do that simply by take a resistance check between the the speed wire and between the motor itself, and it should be an infinity or off the scale uh, resistance reading. And if you uh, need to replace the blower motor. The place to start is uh, 
uh, loosen the set screw on it. Uh, really a simple matter. Usually there's one, sometimes there's two set screws. You just simply loosen them. You don't have to take it out all the way, but you loosen it to where the to where the shaft of the motor will rotate independently of the blower wheel, like that. Then the next step. I'm going to disconnect the run capacitor wires and then uh, normally you will have a uh, ground wire, a green wire going from the motor itself to the, uh, to the frame of the uh, blower assembly. Usually a simple screw to remove on it. Then you're ready to remove the motor, mount, motor mounting bolts. Usually there's three. Yeah, it's just a simple matter of removing them. Let me set them to the side. you have all the mounting bolts out and then the normally the whole assembly will slide out pretty easy sometimes if it hasn't been out for a while it'll be a little a little stiff in that case uh, you can normally get it out I turn it up holding it up and letting the weight of the motor pull the pull the shaft out and then it's just by kind of wiggling the shaft back and forth. After you've got the, the motor itself out, this is what it looks like. This is a pretty much a standard type of adapter, the mounting bracket for them. Uh, there are some cases where some uh, manufacturers several years ago made motors with the uh, with a mounting adapter built onto them. In that case then uh, when you go to replace the motor you typically need uh, what's called a belly band adapter kit. But uh, to replace it you simply loosen up a, a bolt And then the motor will slide out of the frame. And you'll notice that uh, the motors normally have a label plate on them too. Uh, here it'll tell you the voltage of the motor, the horsepower, uh, the rotation, and it'll normally give you a wiring diagram too. Uh, when you go to get a replacement motor, you just want to make sure you get the proper voltage, proper uh, frequency, horsepower, and uh, that's revolution per minute. It tells you how fast that the, the fan moves. And uh, then motors are also classified by their frame size. Uh, in this case we don't need a new motor, but uh, if you do, once you get the right one, it's just a simple matter of uh, putting it back in the uh, mounting brackets. And normally your bracket is going to be just about the center of the, of the uh, motor itself for the band. Tighten up the mounting bolt. After that's good and tight, you're ready to put it back into the blower housing assembly. That's just a simple matter of uh, 
make sure you got it in the proper orientation. Once you get the back in, it's a simple matter of uh, reinstalling the melting bolts. Have to make sure all the holes are lined up. And you want to tighten them all up nice and tight. And you hook back up the wires for the rung capacitor. They're normally mounted uh, on the housing of the blower assembly. Then you want to make sure that the blower wheel is sensing. Uh, basically you want to make sure that it doesn't hit on anything. Make sure it spins freely. Then uh, you get ready to tighten up the set screw that you took loose earlier. You want to make sure that it, the flat part on your shaft is right underneath the set screw. And it's a simple matter of tightening it up. And you want to make sure it's good and tight too. And before you go to put it back in the furnace, you want to give it a spin. Make sure it spins freely. Make sure there's no rubbing noise on it. Now that you're ready to put the blower assembly back in the furnace, it's just a simple matter of reversing the procedure that you use to get it out. There's usually a couple of rails that the assembly will slide into. Slide in. Simple matter of putting the uh, screws back in to hold it secure. Then you'll want to fish the wires back, back into the electrical box. Yeah, it's a simple matter of connecting them back to where you disconnected them. I said on the modern, more modern type of furnaces, they're all going to have quick connects and go to a furnace control board. But this one's a little bit older. Let's get all the wires tucked back in, hooked back in where they should be. And you can close up the electrical compartment. And put the door back on the furnace. And after you've got the furnace all put back together, you want to turn the turn the fan on. Uh, make sure the blower comes on and uh, you want to check uh, just to be sure check at the registers make sure the wa the air is uh, blowing out of the registers nice and steady if it is then uh, then your uh, furnace is ready to go again